Title, The Vanishing Light. In the heart of the Central Valley, just on the edge of the Sierra Nevada mountain range, a group of friends had gathered for their usual weekend bonfire. It was a crisp autumn evening, and the air was filled with the lively energy of youthful revelry. Among them were Jake, the charismatic leader of the group Emily, whose laughter was infectious, Mark, the jokester who never missed a chance to entertain, Sarah, who was always up for an adventure, and Ryan, very bright and intelligent, but shy and reserved. They drove up a winding dusty road, leaving behind the bustling world of the valley and entering the serene embrace of the hills. After some searching, they found the perfect spot, an open clearing surrounded by towering pines, ideal for their bonfire. The night sky was clear, and the stars shone brightly, their light competing with the crackling flames of their fire. Music played, laughter echoed through the trees, and the scent of roasting hot dogs filled the air. As the night wore on, the friends continued their festivities, unaware of the strange events about to unfold. Out of nowhere, a brilliant blinding light appeared in the sky. At first they thought it was a plane or perhaps a satellite, but the light grew brighter, drawing their attention away from the fire, but when Jake turned around, he was shocked to find it extinguished, and embers barely glowing in the dark. A cold shiver ran down his spine as he noticed the Ryan was gone. Where's Ryan? Jake asked. Emily shook as she pointed above the trees. Look up there. Everyone turned around to see. Ryan was floating ten meters above the ground, his body eerily still, and his gaze fixed on the bright, pulsating light that hovered above them. The light seemed to be drawing him in. Mark and Sarah cried out to him, Ryan, Ryan, down here! But he just looked forward with no expression, eyes wide. Then suddenly the light dimmed, and Ryan fell gently to the ground. He landed softly, seemingly unconscious but unharmed. The friends scrambled to Ryan's side, with fire out now, they took him to the car wondering what had just happened and unsure of what to do next. When Ryan finally awoke, he seemed disoriented but otherwise fine. He had no memory of floating or the light. The friends, still shaken by the night's events, quickly packed up and left the clearing, their excitement and joy replaced by a heavy silence. Back in town the incident was never mentioned again. Ryan's experience was brushed off as a bizarre collective hallucination, or a strange trick of the light. The friends agreed to never speak of it again, their once tight-knit group now haunted by the memory of that night. What had they seen that night? They may never know.